The agenda to possess the nations continues unabated. Where are all the tears in the church? When we arrived in this church, we saw that when people were preaching, others responded in tears. It is not the preaching that we do in our generation. Because they have come with an open heart. They long for nothing but the Holy Spirit and Christ. And their mind is on eternity. This is the reason for unleashing the church with the mandate of carrying the gospel to the ends of the year. The grace of God also requires something from us that we should deny ungodliness and worldly lust and then live soberly, righteously and godly in this present age. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Anytime the soul is not put in check and the soul aligns itself with the body to fight against the spirit, the person, even though will be a Christian, but will be a carnal Christian. Welcome to Pentecost Hour, a platform for teaching, training, and unleashing the church to fulfill her mandate as salt and light in the world. Pentecost Hour. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to bless God for yet another opportunity to be at his feet. We are praying that God will grant us grace to be able to hear from him himself. So we've been discussing four ways that people tend to deal with bitterness. Number one, we say that people express it. They just want to express that bitter feeling in their spirit. Now, others want to repress it. And last week, we also talked about the fact that some want to suppress it. Now, we are saying that to express it is to show or to manifest or reveal what is on the inside of a person. Now, we said that expressing one's opinion in itself is not bad. Yeah, but in this instance, what are you manifesting? What are you trying to express? Bitterness. A bitter feeling and certainly it will manifest in anger and fights and the like. So we said that repress is to keep a feeling under control. But just keeping a feeling under control does not mean the pain. All the bitterness is not there. Then we say that when it comes to suppressing, there is an element of force in suppressing. So suppressing a bitter feeling produces tension within the individual. And unless such a person releases that bitterness within. The person is not free at all. And now we come to the big one. Confessing. Confessing. And so today we shall start discussing the fourth and the most effective way of dealing with bitterness. That is to confess it. We will begin discussing it. So what that means is that we are not going to end it today. So to confess is to acknowledge and admit by way of revelation the true state of one's heart. Now to acknowledge and admit. And I said by way of revelation, the true state of one's heart. Revelation because that heart has been in that state all the while. But it sometimes it takes God's grace to bring the true state of your heart to you. I mean to come to terms with the fact that there is something wrong 
on the inside. Na obi pemu ka na che se bebi akoma ni jina no e na oyi ne die e di achre sa hankasa e na ejina. Na I'm saying that it is some many times by revelation because the heart has been in that state for a long time. Na onipa no oyi we e di achre e san se akoma no tena sa te bia ni mu ache yie. Now God is granting that fellow that revelation. Now enumu no onyankopon e manipa no enya ediye e di afri na koma te bia ni mu. Of the true state of his or her heart because their heart has been in that condition for a long time. E san se akoma no na tena ho saa che a nipa no e bi kura mpa no hunu ye. It is a pouring out of facts either to suppress to God or to someone or to the perceived offender with the intention of making peace or receiving forgiveness and favor. I hear ni pano o shini a wana kume muni a gukra na ni woman is obey to media chen yanko pong no nya medin inform so a cheno and now se or pese ni pa e bia wa ye bribi etia no no or ni nubit me nya sum bien wa kambo. Now confessing in the context of bitterness is what I've put out there. So we are saying that it is a pouring out of facts either to suppress to God or to someone or to the perceived offender with the intention. Now, we all confess. But when you confess with the intention of making peace, or receiving forgiveness and favor, then that is a true confession in the context of bitterness. Now take that again. It is very, very important. We all make confessions. We are not talking about uh, confessing your sins to God or positive confession, but the confession in the context of the discussion of bitterness is this one. To acknowledge and Admit. Nah, say by way of revelation, coming from the spirit of God. The true state of one's heart. It is the pouring out of facts hitherto suppressed to God. Or Someone or to the perceived offender with the intention of making peace or receiving forgiveness and favor. And I or why Now are we together? There are two kinds of confessions here. One, you confess or admit before God the true state of your heart with the intention of making peace. Or receiving God's forgiveness and favor. So, the And the second uh, part of the confession is you confess to someone or the perceived offender what the state of your heart is or how you feel about an offense. With the intention of making peace and reconciliation. Someone 
So the first one we are saying that is a confession to God. The second one is a confessing to someone or the perceived offender. What the state of your heart or one's heart is or how you feel about an offense. Offense. This O-F-E-S-S-E is -S -S -E. not C. With the intention of making peace and reconciliation. So, so the intention in the confession is very, very important. So you either confess to God. And other times you confess to men. I do not mean reporting an offense. I do not mean reporting an offense. Now, confession is not reporting an offense. Reporting an offense to someone is not confession. Confession is with an intent. Now, for peace and reconciliation. If that is not there, then it is not the true confession in the context of bitterness. But in true confession, there could be an element of confrontation. I mean, to face up to an or deal with. See, usually, the best thing you can do in an embarrassing situation is to confront it head on. For example, when a superior is or has harassed you sexually. And because of the consequences, you don't want to report them. You may confess. You may confess your feeling to God. And you may confess to this fellow how you are feeling. So that would mean to confront him or her head on. Now we know can see by laying bare how you feel about their action. So in confession, there could be confrontation. In some instances, when confessing to someone may be difficult to do because of the stigmatization. Or the consequence. You simply confess to God. <laughs> there are certain things that it is hurting you. No, maybe we are not proud ye pa. But talking to God alone. And so okay, it would be better. So you keep it. Talk to God. And let go the bitter feeling. I hope you are remembering yours. However, my interest this evening is to deal with confession one. Yes. You confess or admit before God the true state of your heart with the intention of making peace or receiving God's forgiveness 
and favor. As in pouring out the bitterness within. Now before God. Pouring out the bitterness within before the Almighty God. We will go to First Samuel chapter one. Verse number five. Now, this is a story that I want all of us to kind of um, pay attention to. There is this man, or there was this man who had two wives. Penina and Hannah. Now, Penina had children, but Hannah had none. The Bible says, year after year, the man will go to worship in Shiloh. She will go with the two wives. But Hannah will always tease. Penina will always tease Hannah because she was barren. And so there be Hannah Penina or the Hannah awa on we ano esre no. And this irritated her, Hannah. Now we no bribe him no. Yeah, na how Hannah ye pa? Because the Bible says that her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate irritate her. I trust him. They say bribe him no. Na nikurei o yi o yi ne hiya my Hannah kuma. Now, if Hannah was irritated, then the condition is, the problem is not what she's hearing. The problem now has become the condition of her heart. Now, so there was some kind of bitter feeling in Hannah. This one was being caused directly by penning. Now her husband Elkanah will say, Hannah, why are you weeping? So to the extent that she will weep. Why don't you eat? To the extent that she wouldn't even eat. So turn with me to verse 9. First Samuel chapter one from verse nine. Once, when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on his chair by the door post of the Lord's house. Now did he? Now one of them was Shiloh. No, Hannah sorry. Now so now a soft elite a jaso a radia sorry dino ano apunya no. In her deep anguish. Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. Now in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. The anguish is a feeling of pain. It is not on the skin. It is in, on the inside. And then she also wept bitterly. Now there was no one there. She was actually weeping and praying to the Almighty God. And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. Now, she was saying, as I was ready, she was saying, what for now, man, you know, now, what kind of me, now, we're in free, what for now, now, what my wife, now, what about me, and yet, me, the Nobel, me, we're ready, you know, when you know, now, you want to be a ring, can it be? She is praying to God. Confessing her states. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. 
Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk. Now Hannah rekasa na kume muno na nunku ara ana obese bese na ne ne de wonte enti eli bu no se osambofo. Let's move on. Yet waso. And said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. And now Eli can't say no say that bang and now be bronze I could see you will stand no more everywhere you so. Now let's pay attention to verse fifteen and sixteen. Mommy, I'm saying you must do no any do see any ye. Not so, my lord. Hannah replied, I am a woman who is deeply troubled, deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Hannah Buana said, There be Mura, me a barbara wounding, not Bobesa any in Sabiara de Minumbi. Now, me fear me cry, me go a ruddy. And I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Me fear me cry, me fear me cry, go a ruddy. Now, what does she mean by pouring out her soul to the Lord? Now, oh, fear me cry, go a ruddy. And you know, a dear no patchy. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. And far, waba wa ento oba who who ni bingo if we say. Pouring out my great anguish and grief. I'm pouring out the bitter feeling within. See, unforgiveness, resentment, and holding on to grudge keep you in bondage. It will keep you in bondage. You only be free when you pour it out before the Lord. Adolf no mse ya udia ko ura wa kume ma anase o so me na se po bi mwa no e ma uya kwa ansa na obenya ofa hu die na adi wo hwie gu. Brothers and sisters, you need to free yourself today. Adolf no like a bird from the foulness. Se wo nya ofa hu die ti se anoma we ja no na we free for the sum for every day. And times of refreshing will come from above. You know the state of your heart. Pour out the bitterness before God. Just confess to him your feeling of bitterness. And times of refreshing will come from above. Now verse 17. Eli answered, Go in peace. May the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Verse 18. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way. Now she can eat and eat something. And now her face was no longer downcast because the reflection on her face was as a result of what was going on on the inside. Now, I can say, my wife na inya weni mu adom, ena obanu si mu koko di di na ne ni mu so na ne ni mu so entise kaneno biu. Let me say this. I mean, can we? Don't forgive people because they are nice guys or they are worth forgiving. Forgive people because you want favor from God. You see, if you want to marry your wife well, don't marry your wife because you love her so much. Marry her in love because you love the Lord. Many people do not forgive. Deserve our forgiveness. But if you want God's favor, pour out that bitter feeling. Don't look at the person's actions or inaction. But remember that it is God who will either lift you up or destroy you. Says Father, I'm pouring out my spirit. 
Just do one thing for me. Nanso ya adie ba ko pe grant me a boy. Say um mummy oba benia. She wouldn't say that give me a boy so that Penny now will also know that I'm not barren. No. Wanka say mummy. She wouldn't go there at all. Mummy oba beni na Penny na hu say me so me nyeboni there be wanka sa kura. No. Give me a son. Mummy oba beni. And I will give him back to you. Na me de no e be mau. That is a spirit that is released. We Spirit that is released. Now, which verse are we? So, verse 19. Early the next morning, they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered. I was sorry, I know, but you too, because sorry, a radi enim. Now, was some bar won't fear Rama. Now, Elkana, Nini, Hana, a die, now a radi kaino. So, in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. Now, I feel redrawn. Na Hana nyin sen na owo oba berima na oto ni din Samuel na o kan se e wrade ho e na mesre no not because i ask god to pay back penina and yes say mesre wrade say on tu a penina ka i ask god for him mesre wrade so on fa oba beni no amame god has given me in this boy na e wrade the oba beni no amame the act of confession brings deliverance i don't know say e pe mu aka ya odi e wey mu no e de ogie ba it brings deliverance to the soul e de ogie and if i would e ba mo kra no it releases the soul for that matter, the individual, and releases favor from above. Now, I pray that we will repent. Now, repent is to turn or to return. Try and turn away from all the resentment that is in your heart. Now, don't brood over them any longer. And great times of refreshing will come from above. My interest this evening is just one. Let us go before God. And let us pour our bitter feeling before Him. This is where to begin. And yes, as you then subsequently I'll tackle confessing to man. Now yeah, to us no, yeah, because yeah, pay more country or nipa. Because the human being is quite difficult. It's not say nipa, ne one who meet. You need so many strategies in trying to deal with man. But as for God, just go before him. And let it be straight. Let him know the condition. Say, oh God. You know the state of my heart. This woman is pestering my mommy or hammy. You know all the insults. Are you Tell God Can't your you real state of your heart. Because God knows. Tell him. Tell him. With the mind of receiving forgiveness from him and favor from the Lord. I pray that God will grant us grace. And strength to be able to do justice. Shall we rise in prayer? Let's rise in prayer. And just go to God straight away. Go to God straight away. Just go to God like Hannah did. Shall we pray together?